Welcome, everybody. We're going to kick off in just a couple of seconds here, giving people to jump over from the last call. If you haven't already, um, the liquidity pool incentives have gone live, so make sure you jump on over to that. We've got an announcement in the announcements channel, and we'll talk a little bit more about it as well. But if you're looking for something to do in the next two minutes, feel free to jump on over and do that. All right, let's get started. Um, hey everybody, welcome. Appreciate you joining me today. Obviously, it's a big day. We have a whole bunch of stuff that went live this week. Um, we'll talk about that a little bit later today. Uh, today's overview, we're going to do the standard format here. I'm um, going to keep going with shout outs and some announcements. We'll get through some of these Pocktober updates from um, Adrian's going to join us and give us a little update. And then we're going to jump into Wrap Pocket. Um, we have Dermot on the call. I think Mike's supposed to be joining us um, as well. So hopefully we'll have some insight from both of them. Otherwise, um, yeah, if anybody has any questions, comments, concerns, as always, feel free to interrupt me. I'm going to start with some shout outs today. Um, again, these shout outs are meant to be things, things that are happening behind the scenes. Maybe people who don't see a, a ton of like visible, um, maybe not a lot of visible stuff, but they're they're doing all the work in places that maybe everybody can't see. So um, my shout outs this week are, I really want to give a shout out to Jack. Um, Jack does a ton of stuff for the foundation behind the scenes. Again, not always in the in front of the spotlight, but um, reviewing the billions of documents and blog posts, making sure that everything we put out makes sense and has all like the legacy information and knowledge from the, the team. Um, and generally just keeping us on the path, making sure that the stuff we're doing is uh, in line with the foundation and uh, all of our DNA and goals. So I want to do a little shout out to Jack. I don't know if you're here, but thank you. And then another big one is Jinx, um, who uh, is a little bit more in the spotlight, but um, I've just been super impressed the last couple of weeks. Anytime we have a problem, Jinx has offered to help and been there. So I really want to do a big shout out, like constantly reliable for solving problems that sometimes I'm like, how is this even in your wheelhouse? But uh, find a way to do it. So big thank you to to the Jays this week, Jackson, Jack and Jinx. Um, I don't know if anybody else is interested in unmuting and giving another shout out, um, but I'm going to keep doing this until somebody from the community does it. So, Otherwise, I'm going to put someone on the spot. Oh, Pocket News is typing. Come on, you can do it in chat too. Yeah, just to double down um, on, 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 on Jinx in particular, I think in the last few weeks, we've obviously launched our pocket as we go to and the staking website. and. Um, Jinx has obviously been helping with the hosting and setting up the subdomains and just been really, really helpful on hand. Um, and that's been great. That's been really, really, and in terms of the comms, pushing things out, I guess, as with a lot of the other community members as well. But yeah, I think personally from my side, in terms of community members uh, directly getting involved and supporting that, it's been, yeah, unbelievably helpful. So yeah, and again, big shout out and big thanks to Jinx. And then I guess... Immediate on that front as well. Yeah, I think this, we've done a lot of content. I've seen this this kind of month. I thought the the spaces was great last night and adds an amazing job at co-hosting and kind of really kind of pulling it all together. So um, yeah, another shout out to ads as well for just kind of really ramping up our comms and just leveling us up uh, more generally. So yeah, putting putting us in, building much better foundations in terms of our marketing comms. Yeah, I'll plus one ads. Um... It, it seems like she has a huge team, but it's generally ads doing everything. And fortunately, Pocket News has is, is picked up a lot of uh, a lot of work and done a lot of stuff for both me and ads. So, um, yeah, shout out to her as well. Thanks, Dermot. Great chat. That. Sorry. I mean, Pocket News, the the walkthroughs, run-throughs, the posting on Twitter, and actually what's a, little, a lot of the stuff that's come out on main for uh, Pocket, those walkthroughs and videos have been incredible. I'm, I'm sorry, Pocket News. Um, you were so obvious. I almost I, I, I forgot you until there. Uh, until Zach prompted, yeah. I mean, incredible work in the, in the last couple of weeks, and particularly in the last 10 days. Yeah, you're hired. Um, excited for you to take over these community calls in a week. I'm uh, just going to keep giving you more responsibility. So thank you, everybody. All right, we're going to move on to some of the announcements here. Uh, slow, slow couple of weeks. There's no new DAO proposals. Um, but we do have a couple of things in the forums I want to draw your attention to. Um, three big ones here. So Regs, CryptoCorn has 
um, has mentioned that uh, they would like to see how the community feels about putting some regulations around who can open sockets. There's a conversation happening in the in the discourse forum about that, and I really encourage anybody who has any thoughts on it to jump over there and weigh in. Um, I think there's some really good points in there um, as far as like who wants to be in the community, how long they have to be around to to be a uh, to be able to open a socket, and you know I think it generally comes from a good place of trying to protect funds and make sure they're being used in the right way. So definitely go over and weigh in. I think Shane, I saw your your voice in there, so appreciate that as well. Um, there is Pep fifty seven on Grip uh, from Zatar, and I don't think Zatar is. Oh, Zatar, you're on the call. Uh, hands on mute if you want to talk about it at all. If not, I can give an overview. Uh, just read the post. It's all. It's all pretty uh, clear from the post. Um, yeah, I'm most mostly the bottom line is I want people to weigh in on what they think, and uh, once I have everyone's thoughts, I can put together a response. Whether whether it'll be a renewal proposal or a uh, sayonara post or something in between. Yeah. Thanks, Atar. And so for anybody who doesn't know, I, I actually didn't know this either. Um, Grip offers supports for people who want to uh, build better proposals or just need, it seems like a sounding board as they're trying to create a proposal and make sure that what they're doing is in the best interest of the community. So it's a really, it seems to be a really awesome resource and it feels highly underutilized. So um, please go over, check that out, leave your thoughts and feedback and see if maybe we can um some effort behind getting it a little more visibility so people know it's an, op an option for them as they build proposals. Um, and then the last one is a socket. So um, Sinatch Pak or Patrick has opened a socket to help with designs and templates. Um, they've done a really great job of taking initiative over there and laying out what they're going to be working on. So uh, jump on over to see what's what's going on there. And again, um, you know, the socket's open for a month. So uh, let's give them as much feedback as possible so that way we can make sure it's good use of funds and continue to keep that relationship going. And then the last piece here is tech. So uh, we launched a couple of things over the last two weeks. Wrap Pocket is live. Uh, the liquidity pool is live on Uniswap. And the DAO incentives are live as of about an hour ago. Um, so I want to give a huge shout out to everybody at ENF and then also our close collaborators that have made that happen. It was a really big team effort, and I know that Wrap Pocket's been on the roadmap for quite some time now. Uh, I'm not going to put it into days or months, but um, like like you said at the start, Dermot, it's really great to see this out there. Um, getting access to the DeFi community from Ethereum is huge, and we're really excited and excited to see the amount of people contributing here. So um, another little shout out to say that if anybody does have questions about the Wrap Pocket um, or the uh, staking pools, there's a channel in Discord to jump over to and put your notes there. Um, I also want to call out that if there are any inconsistencies with the doc, please note that and, and just know that we are making an attempt to update the docs as soon as we can. And we're looking to upgrade them to probably Gitbook in the next uh, in the next couple of weeks. To just make it easier for everybody to be able to update and weigh in versus having to go through GitHub to do that. All right, so some upcoming events. Uh, obviously, the pool went live. The Dow Incentives went live. Pocket Twitter, uh, both ours and Pocket News, has some really great walkthroughs on that. So thank you again to Pocket News for making those a reality. You all are in the community call today. And then I just wanted to do a quick call out to say that um, we have had a lot of community calls lately, builder calls, uh, node runner calls. So I think this is going to be the last community call for the month of November uh, and give you all a little bit of a break. And we're going to pick it up come November 2nd unless... Uh, if anything urgent comes up, but I really appreciate everybody for sticking with us through this. I know it's been a lot of synchronous time together. Um, I also am going to do a quick shout out here to Jinx. So with the with the idea of having uh, multiple gateways coming out later this month, Jinx has offered to make the Node Runners call a Node Runners and Gateway call, so a little more uh, ecosystem focused. Uh, and with the idea that Node Runners can then cross pollinate with of the gateways and if anybody is interested in opening their own gateways we can uh, foster community to do that so see, see uh jinx's post and the wednesday node runner calls for any updates there um and thank you again jinx for for taking that on i think it's going to be really helpful for the community as we grow over the next couple of months 
Um, and then once again, we, we do have a Google Calendar link in the top right. I know there's a lot going on. So if you want to scan that and add that to your personal calendars, that'll be updated constantly. So, um, And then a quick announcement on the Pocket MPS survey. So the last one we did was run in April. Uh, so we haven't done that in about six months. So this includes about two quarters. Um, in that time, there's been a lot of changes. The team's gotten bigger. Um, a couple of things have launched and gone live. We are obviously uh, committed to doing the best we can for the protocol. And you know, we really want everybody to weigh in. So this survey takes less than 30 seconds. And I'm going to drop that um, that link into the, the Discord chat here. But really, I, I would appreciate anybody taking the time to do that. And we'll blast it out around um, Discord and social. But yeah, again, 30 seconds. And it helps us understand if we're doing a good job, doing a bad job, and uh, how we can do better. So thank you for that. Uh, it looks like this is a duplicate one. So here we go. October update. Ads, are you in the call? This is not in the call. Well, I guess I can run through the, the basics here. You know, we had our October Twitter earlier this week. That went off really well. We had a lot of people join. Um, if you do want to catch up on that, uh, you can go to the Pocket, uh, the Pocket Twitter and check the recording. I also think that it's been posting the announcements. Uh, we just launched a joke race, which has some incentives tied to it as well for today, an ode to Ethereum. So anybody who wants to uh, hit up ChatGPT and see what he thinks an ode to Ethereum would sound like and submit that is welcome to. Uh, you can also try to be creative yourself, but, um, you know, with all the AI stuff going on these days, maybe we just, maybe we just take the shortcut. Um, I no, guess I'll pass it. Ter terrible shout out, Zach. You're going to ah. use your own creativity, right? Come on. Well, I've been having fun with Mid Journey, so maybe there's a, a mix between human creativity and uh, idea creation, like ChatGPT, that we can we can do together. But listen, I'm not going to know that. I, I, I agree. I think combination of good prompt engineering on the visual side, plus I mean, it's ultimately a poem for the joke race. But yeah, I think if you want to jazz it up and add a poem to that, um, maybe you can get some inspiration from ChatGPT, but I think the winning one is most likely to be something, well, that's the bet. I mean, will computers uh, beat out kind of human creativity or it'll be a meld of both? Uh, we shall see. Yeah, and we can be the first uh, the first sample test case for this. Um, so we'll let everybody know if it was, well, whoever wins, let us know if it was you or a robot that wrote your ode. Um, Dermot, while I have you, is there anything you want to throw out for October? No, um, I think there's, there's, as I said, there's been a lot of content, a lot of focus on the, the launch in the last, um, I guess, kind of, yeah, eight days. And that's all live. And I guess we'll talk about that kind of shortly. But um, there'll be more kind of content coming out. And I kind of that's obviously leading that. I think the, the joke race itself will be a $5,000 pool denominated in Rap Pocket, um, which will be kind of pushing out and actually the vote and anyone who can vote on the allocation of those rewards would actually be, um, of course, any pocket day voters, any holders of pocket, um, I think as of the time the, the vote went live, but also to really kind of tap into the Ethereum values and the Ethereum community, actually anyone who's actually ever donated to Gitcoin. So um, we will be looking to communicate, tap into the broader Ethereum community, and we're obviously celebrating Ethereum as part of this, as part of this bridge. So I think it's going to be a fun exercise. And I think in terms of how we hope it to work. Ultimately, probably going to be some canvassing and advocating. We're looking to tap into some other creative communities and some other aligned folk to encourage them to submit. But I think once you've actually made your own submission, I think everyone here on this call, hopefully everyone in the community, certainly everyone in PNF, are all going to you know, compete. We're all competitive. We all want to win. And But um, to try and get other people to vote for you, to call out maybe that you're... Uh, maybe some people play quite a Machiavellian play and say that yours is actually... Uh, written by yourself and not by a computer but i think to win i think you're gonna to have to encourage other people to get behind you and there's a funny voting dynamic actually so um when it's announced you'll see that um the original joke race to go all the way back to the start is a, a regular contest that starts and um the winning joke is actually not the joke that gets the most votes it's the joke that gets the second most votes because the takeaway sometimes the second idea is best but also it introduces a fun kind of gamified mechanic where it's not just everyone voting for the winner it's actually there's some kind of tactics there of if you're getting too much you almost want people to vote for someone else to go ahead of you so uh it should be fun. I think it's a nice way to tap into the Theorem ecosystem, 
share more about what we're up to, connect with others, but also to have a bit of fun in the process. And uh, and even even to get to kind of get some more wrap pocket distributed into some uh, hopefully well deserving um, winners as well. Yeah, thanks, Dermot. I mean, that's huge. That's a that's a very good sized pool, and it sounds like a lot of fun too. So, uh, yeah, join us, everybody. Um, I see we also have Mateo and Jack on the call. I don't know if either of you want to add anything as far as uh, Pocktober updates or announcements or anything coming up. Silence is golden. Seems like seems like we're good to move on. Okay. Hey everybody, so those are our Pocktober updates. Um, again, if you if you watch our Twitter, that's where you're going to see most of those, so keep an eye on that. And then I'm actually going to pass it right back to you, Dermot, um, to talk more about Wrap Pocket, bridging staking LPs, incentives, and you know maybe a little more context on why Wrap Pocket is such a big deal. I know we've talked about that before, but it really is a big thing for the community and the ecosystem. And um, I don't know if we have any statistics or any like analytics around what's happening. Um, but yeah, I'd love to hear how things have changed, uh, even in the short amount of time that we've been live. Yeah, sure. Thanks, Zach. Um, and I, I talked a bit about this um, la- la- yesterday evening, and I guess on past community calls. So I don't want to rehash everything, but in the kind of the the big picture thinking of where we're going at Pocket, obviously we we know our mission in terms of having the most reliable performance. We're empowering developers with the most reliable, performance, and cost-effective access to open data. But our strategy in terms of how we believe we're going to get there is actually not just by doing everything ourselves like a centralized company would be, it's to harness our community as much as possible, extremely pragmatically across the key areas that drive value to our network. So that's on our supply side. That's very obvious. We have an amazing community of node runners and validators. And then our demand side, which we're now growing with the birth of the, the first gateway and hopefully many more in the future, but the other components are also essential and um, they're all necessary. And without having all of them, um, having as much value in as ultimately as being as decentralized as possible, um, it just won't be sufficient to get us where we want. And the other two dimensions are capital markets and governance. Obviously our governance is in a good place. Um, we wouldn't, I think Jack and Ben have been communicating um, pretty well about everything that's coming up in that front with creds. We realize it's good, but it can definitely be better. Uh, and leaving the other component to be our capital markets and for ultimately a useful work protocol. So um, there are infrastructure runners, you know, serving relay requests for all of these blockchains that we support and maybe potentially other open data sources in the future too. So they need to be able to access Pocket to be able to stake their earning Pocket and to be able to kind of turn that into whatever currency they need to pay their bills. That needs to be as frictionless as possible. And frankly, this is the key area where Pocket being one, being an isolated ecosystem, and two, actually, where not being a centralized player, where people are actually just paying you in um, dollars straight to your bank account, uh, isn't actually so good, at least right now. So improving the liquidity for Pocket is essential. It's really the lifeblood of our economy, and particularly with on-chain gateways, they'll be staking to, there will be, right now, we have the weekly burn, but all of that will soon be on-chain. And having people being able to access Pocket to buy it, as well as be able to sell it for ETH or whatever currency they need to pay their employees, pay their infrastructure bills is absolutely fundamental. And I guess in terms of that data that you're referring to, the 2% liquidity debt, which is usually seen as the most key marker for liquidity in any market, which means how much um, in dollar terms can you buy of that relevant asset within 2% of the spot price? And that's been pretty dire for pocket for at least the last 12 months and honestly even in the kind of the real boom and frothy times at the start of last year it still wasn't actually that good um it was all right but it wasn't like fantastic so top projects could all have hundreds of thousands of dollars to like the very top projects and kind of the deep ethereum pools you'll be able to buy millions of dollars around that kind of mark um for pocket right now on the centralized exchanges it's ranges between one to three thousand dollars so with the launch of wrap pocket we're looking to get to at least one to 1.3 million dollars of liquidity and i expect that will kind of start to kind of build over the coming week now that we have incentives are live quite a lot of people have been pinging me directly and the rest of the team just to kind of ask how things are how they work becoming aware that things are happening some people are 
and staking, some of them are just minting um, to actually be able to kind of get their pocket over to Ethereum in the first place and also to access Ethereum too. We can get that in a second. So that will build. And I guess looking at that kind of like mid range uh, target of roughly $1.3 million of liquidity, that will get us to a 2% depth of roughly $13,000. So rough, up, to, up to a 10x um, better improvement than the, what we have on various days on um, our centralized exchanges. And then if you add on the fact that Uniswap is 24-7, it's open source, it's decentralized, it's permissionless, anyone in the world can access it. There's also the composability elements. People can open new pools if they want. People have been talking about V3 if they want. There's all of that kind of cool stuff now that we actually have a live working uh, token on on Ethereum. So that's the liquidity front is absolutely huge and really beneficial. And even right now with uh, liquidity still still building, I think it's already better than the centralized exchanges. So that's that's pretty crazy. Um, Low volume, but still it's you've got better slippage if you're trading on Uniswap right now versus our centralized exchanges. And then kind of zooming out again, so liquidity is obviously essential, but we are a community and reducing our coordination costs is ultimately going to make, make us all more productive. So right now, the amount of coordination that um, myself, Jack, does a hell of a lot of this, Ben and Nelson do in terms of payments and all that kind of stuff is just made so much easier once we can actually leverage Rat Pocket as a programmatic primitive. So we will be having uh, streaming payments for, for, for kind of socket contributors. They can be kind of, uh, we can trigger um, payments for, for kind of RFPs much easier. Once we have wrap pocket, we can even have vesting for certain people, whoever that may be, all on chain, all transparent, fully auditable. And um, yeah, it just opens up a whole kind of new kind of bag of tricks and a great kind of amazing infrastructure we can tap into for running our debt payments, grant payments, for empowering our contributors through you know, things like coordinate with pools that the kind of the contributors themselves just allocate automatically based on who they believe in their kind of group, um, I guess, was doing the best work. And so we don't have to be involved in that. So the more we can empower our community, the better. And there's another area that we're still kind of researching to kind of implement properly, but actually that's involving use of on-chain permissions. And so that's the idea of sockets are permissionless. But right now, to make things work just because of the kind of the administrative nature of the pocket blockchain without having smart contracts. Once things are triggered, we need to trigger those payments and we get chased for payments, all that kind of stuff. We can actually allow anyone say with whatever threshold of reputation um, we deem it uh, relevant to open up a socket, to have that permission. And then they can open up a socket, which essentially will be a, a streamed payment to that relevant address. And then actually someone else with that same permission can switch it off. And hopefully they will, we will know their wallet or they will hopefully kind of explain why they're doing so on a forum. But if we're giving people these rights, they should be able to use them. So there's the two elements, really. It's the kind of liquidity, which is a fundamental necessity. Um, that's already better as of right now, which is just with the pool only distributing rewards for the last hour and a half. Um, and then, of course, to start general operations and reducing our coordination costs. So, so I, I would say they are the two biggest changes right now. And, and I think in terms of everything else, I think it's kind of open to the community and everyone on the call if they want to ask some questions around how to get involved, what does that look like, or anything else. Because, yeah, I guess I'm, we've obviously shared the docs, but um, I know sometimes you kind of want to ask questions or hear someone directly to kind of make it come to life. So that is yeah, a right. request for... Uh, Comments, questions, anything? Please do. Yeah, can I can I jump in there for a second, Dermot? Yeah, please do. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if you touched on this. I just uh, I just joined the call, but um, just right off the bat, the ability for um, someone to spin up a simple blend borrow front end where uh, node runners can then borrow based on their POC rewards, borrow some USDC, and sell that to pay their bills. And um, you know, pay that back with their with their POC rewards. It's just a huge um, uh, uh, potential for just the economics of the network itself. Um, you know, going even further than that, you know, what does an ST POC look like? What does it look like to use Curve um, and and some other kinds of um, some of these other kinds of platforms? Uh, you know, harking back to what uh, 
Thunderheads, uh, the Thunderhead uh, brothers were doing uh, with their uh, node pool, right? Um, how can something like that be more integrated now uh, with, with Graph Pocket? I think all the other things we don't ever for so long, and just such a huge thing. Sorry, Mike, I think you're breaking up a bit. Or at least you're breaking up for me. He's also breaking up for me. Yeah, you're a bit robotic. Sorry, dude. All right. Oh, wait. Yeah, I think you can. This is, I think Zatara said, if you, if you want to start over, if you, if you maybe try again. For those who weren't on the spaces last night, um, Mike gave us a, a great update, um, but uh, he also sounded like he was walking through the middle of a motorway, so um, at least it doesn't sound like he's in danger this time. But uh, yeah, I, can't, I don't think we can hear him at all. But now, can you guys hear me now? Is this better? That's yeah, better. that sounds a bit better. Okay, great. Um, yeah, I think about everything with the economics relative to Pocket as as sources and sinks, right? And the only source that creates Pocket is is relays. And up until now, up until Raft Pocket, the only real sink we've had is, or sinks we've had is is uh, the supply side people purchasing Pocket to our nodes. And up until recently, um, the burn on the demand side. And really, what this does is uh, create way more opportunity for dead sinks uh, uh, that result in less selling for the token itself, but also uh, just a broader access for more people in the market to, to participate in the network in different ways. And that's really more than anything what Wrapped Pocket opens up, uh, which is gets to just really excited about. Yeah, I, I think that is true. If I mean, as you kind of said, the fact that you can fluidly go from wrap pocket to eat the stables out to employees, contractors, whoever else, um, and back and forth, um, and then kind of trigger multi sigs and all of that kind of good stuff in terms of uh, good operations and upsec. And yeah, I think we we now have the ability to do all of that. So yeah, I think it's uh, exciting times ahead. I'm also curious if any node runners on the call are planning to use it that way, um, or has anybody done it already? So I don't know if that's too deep in the weeds for for stuff you talk about publicly. So sounds like a resounding no. Um, well. Mike, while we have you, is I, I guess I, I'd love to know, is there anything else that gets you excited about Rep Pocket? I mean, those are some some of the ones off the top of your head, but you know, when we spoke the other day, um, you, know, you, had, you had a really long thought about about why um, why this is so important to the ecosystem as well. So I don't know if there's any other thoughts you want to add to this or anything else you'd like to clarify. Any big unlocks on the road? Yeah, I mean, I think this. Uh, 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 alongside the uh, see the lock, uh, I think it's a site. Um, uh, so, you know, Apple free, and you know, the, I think we talked this yesterday on the Twitter spaces, but uh, to be able to further financial franchise um, our kind of supply side uh, talk that's locked up, um, it's, it's a big unlock for that. Um, and that can be decided. I mean, it gives us a lot more ability to deploy to an existing system uh, on the DeFi side that I haven't really had access to. And I really do believe that with Trump Fox and eventually. Mike, you're breaking up for me again. Oh. Yeah, we're yeah. catching every third word or so. 
which is understandable. Like I said, yeah, I mean, the conference today, so um, you know, everyone. And interestingly, that. to pick up with the point Jinx just said, because actually, I think that's really on point. Um, so various exchanges have kind of uh, kind of get, came up to us and said, for them, Uniswap is essentially just another you know, source of liquidity that they will tap into. So knowing that that is there, seeing what's in the pool, understanding the liquidity is just really helpful. That makes it way easier to to list, say, wrap pocket, to think about pocket, to understand it. It just kind of opens up doors. But like we're kind of, we're now kind of alive for a lot of people in the Ethereum ecosystem. So that will, I think, just make a big difference in the, the coming weeks and months ahead for we're active. Um, people can see us, people can access us. So yeah. Um, and yeah, excited to see how people are using it and sharing kind of thoughts and everything else in between. But cool, I, I don't have anything immediate, Zach, so kind of open to yeah. anyone else in the community if they have any questions about using the bridge, um, even just using Uniswap if they want to access or sell a wrap pocket or if they are looking to be an LP and what that looks like. But otherwise, um, I, th I think we can probably move forward. Thanks, Dermot. I think that's a great idea. Again, if anybody has any questions, you can drop them in chat, bring them up now. You can also put them in the community chat later. Um, we'll be available to, to answer any of them. Cool. Uh, well, I guess I'm just going to open the floor then to see if anybody has any final things they want to talk about, questions, concerns. Um, otherwise, we'll wrap this one up a little bit early today. Really appreciate everybody joining. Again, like I said, I know it's been a really... Been a heavy couple of weeks with comms and in coordination. So um, again, thanks everybody for showing up. We'll take a couple of weeks break from the community call and give everybody some time back. Um, we will still be holding those those V the V zero the Morse builder calls and um, Jinx again. Thank you for for kicking off the node runners and gateways calls later this month. Any idea when more of the gateway tech will be open sourced? Um, actually, Mike, if you're still available, that might be a, a great question for you. Oral Shansky, if you're on the call. You want to jump in? I, I can speak to that because um, it's nobody's working on it. Um, aiming in the, I mean, basically latest is end of the month is what they're working towards. Hopefully in the coming kind of 10 days to two weeks is the kind of ideal plan. So yeah, I guess worst case kind of two and a half weeks is what we're kind of uh, working towards by end of the month. But yeah, hopefully a little bit before then. So yeah, that's kind of the... The latest and yeah we're really excited to kind of have that all in the hands of um yeah the community and other future gateway operators too thanks Termit. and again we'll we'll keep um we'll keep everybody in the loop on that as soon as we have some more firm dates we'll we'll make those announcements and make sure everybody sees that yeah but i, I would say roughly like early november at the latest would be when we're we're looking at making sure that's out um, it seems like everybody's on track for that. So, all right, everybody, seems like a great opportunity to wrap up the call. Thanks again for coming out. As always, uh, if you have any questions, hit us up in the community chat. Thanks, everybody. Awesome. Thanks, all.